Hello. Yeah, good morning. I'm glad to see everybody up, up, up and very bright on a Saturday. <laughs> For some people, it's the sleeping day. I will be talking, ad addressing uh, some of the questions that were posed uh, to our panelists. My focus uh, will be on on you know the, the the field per se, not you know not issue not issues on you know, you know focusing on uh, cooperation between institutions and this, and and the like. So it's looking at um, issues within the field. Ukrainian Canadian studies is focused largely on history, sociology, and more uh, recently ethnography, and to a, to a small but growing extent of political science. Religion also enters the picture, as does literature. The sociological studies of an earlier era with Ukrainian-Canadians uh, uh, be, were being studied predominantly from an Anglo-Canadian perspective, centering on the question of immigrant adjustment. And that he used, for example, uh, Woodsworth's 1970 Ukrainian Rural Communities or Charles Young's 1931 The Ukrainian Canadians, a study of, of assimilation, uh, you know, as examples. A crossover work was Vera Lysenko's Men in Sheepskin Coats in 1947, written by a Ukrainian Canadian who was not concerned about assimilation uh, per se as compared to integration, but rather the manner in which it was conducted achieved. After the Second World War, sociological studies were more likely to examine Ukrainian Canadians in their own right. I'll use, uh, for example, uh, Roman, the uh, volume edited by Roman Patrician on changing realities, social trends among Ukrainian Canadians that came out in 1980 as well as the recent work by uh, Isayo et al. that never uh, was published in full. There were some uh, parts from it, uh, work on the fourth wave. The earliest historical studies of Ukrainians tended to be accounts recollecting the early days, for example, Vasil Chumr Spomene. Subsequently, Ukrainians started looking more closely at the development of Ukrainian Canadians, both geographically and organizationally. The majority of these works were in Ukrainian and often uh, descriptive and prone to a certain amount of filial pietism and uh, attempts at uh, group legitimization. All the same, they established the contours of Ukrainian life in, in Canada. Um, and at this, I just want to add an aside: uh, Ukrainian Canadians had a you know had a very strong uh, impetus in terms of of coming out with uh, memoirs and and also a strong a strong interest in their. In, in in their history in Canada, uh, uh, propelled, I would say, by a strong sense of uh, their critical role in the in the uh, settlement settling of of the Canadian Prairie provinces, and uh, I, I, uh, with it, almost the sense of of uh, accomplishment, the sense that they they had achieved something uh, something special. And this was something that uh, you won't find uh, comparable uh, in among Ukrainian communities uh, in the United States in the same way. So they had a sense of uh, almost territoriality, if you want to call it. Uh, 1970s saw the evolution of the field to include works that were done by trained professionals utilizing primary sources and or field re research. Uh, one can point to authors such as John Lair, Francis Ripa, and Oris Martinovich, among others in, uh, in this regard. Key has played a vital role in helping move this process forward with conferences, research funding, scholarships, publishing, making resource uh, materials uh, available, not notably the, uh, the large uh, uh, project to, to uh, microfilm Ukrainian-Canadian serial newspapers and serial titles uh, that was undertaken very early in the history of, history of the Institute. Uh, I'll not deal with uh, ethnography and, and the and uh, other disciplines in the in the uh, you know interest of time. Um, the, one of the questions posed was was uh, should the emphasis be on Ukraine the on organized Ukrainian community life in Canada or more broadly on Canadians of Ukrainian descent regardless of their of their uh, you know of their uh, institution or, I guess, organizational or community involvement. 
this also uh, overlaps with a, another question, uh, sort of, you know, organized Ukrainian study of the, an organized elite Ukrainian community or elite-led or, you know, general social history. Um, I strongly believe that, uh, uh, you know, a, an initial or immediate emphasis on historical writing about Ukrainians in Canada after the immediate pioneer period needs a, a strong focus on organized uh, institutional Ukrainian life as well as a full picture of their socioeconomic circumstances in order to establish the framework in which a broader commun cultural community functioned. Uh, w you know, we, we have, we, you know, we now have this and certainly uh, to, the, uh, to the period of the Second World War. Uh, thanks uh, to the volumes uh, uh, that have been prepared uh, for the institute by Oris Martinovich, the interwar peer, or the uh, the uh, Ukrainians in Canada, uh, the formative period, which yeah, you got with your your packages, and the recent released it's for the first of two books of a follow up volume going to the Second World War. Uh, you know this, uh, you know. Uh, uh, at the same time, the changing as, uh, wait a second. No. So, so basically, you know, we, we do have a, a, a general f uh, framework. Primary focus of Ukrainian Canadian studies in the uh, coming decade. Uh, before getting to this matter, we need to recognize that the pioneer study has been studied extensively, although not exhaustively. The Martinovich volume that I mentioned to you, uh, 1891 to 1924, uh, required a, a massive amount of research, notwithstanding the fact that a lot of work had been done in, uh, on the Ukrainian pioneer period. Uh, still, it had one gap, and that, would, that was uh, the immigration of, of Ukrainians from Russian-ruled Ukraine. And this was uh, filled by uh, a subsequent monograph by Vadim Kokushkin, uh, From Peasants to Laborers. The history of the interwar and second war periods could still use research, and uh, even the pioneer period certainly is, is not exhausted. Uh, meanwhile, much has been written, well, much has been written about Ukrainian life since the Second World War, uh, mainly as articles. A fuller historic account is much needed. For practical period, uh, considerations of periodization might go from about 1945-46 until about 1967-71, sort of the, the, you know, the, well, the war, the post-war, uh, up to the uh, period in which multiculturalism was proclaimed. And then, you know, the subsequent period, 1971 to 1991, uh, we, uh, it's still uh, post-1991, uh, we can, uh, it's now 25 years, we can certainly look at a certain uh, historic perspective on that, but uh, I think the earlier periods uh, would need to be covered first. Uh, certainly the post-Second World War period really stands out as an area requiring uh, uh, you know, immediate st uh, study. Uh, in the in the short term, I, I don't think we've exhausted the whole question of uh, the study of Ukrainians during the First World War, uh, and you know, in particular, in in uh, in the view of uh, the fact that the Ukrainian community really was uh, under uh, under attack during the you know in the First World War period, you know, by nativism. The question of internment is one matter, but it's almost almost uh, you know part of a part of a, a larger picture. The relationship between Ukrainian settlers and their descendants and the First Nations is a topic that requires further study as well. Some recent academic works have, re, uh, have appeared in this regard. Uh, a collection a research report by Robert Clamash uh, as, uh, for the Winnipeg Papers uh, put out by the Center for Ukrainian Canadian Studies, cheekily uh, named Cossacks and Indians, Encounters, Abductions, Guilt, Ballads, and Empathy as well as uh, some, some articles by uh, Lindy Ledohovsky. And a proper history of the social uh, uh, history of the interwar period, uh, you know, both urban and rural, uh, would be much desired. Okay. 
Now, the relationship between Ukrainian and Ukrainian Canadian studies, what do they have in common? You know, I can always, uh, you, know, you know, I would say uh, this is, you know, given, give the old uh, Ukrainian standard of delaying while you're thinking. It's a complicated question, it's a complicated matter. Uh, Ukrainian-Canadian studies, by definition, has to take into recognition the role played by old country attitudes and experience in the development of Ukrainian life in Canada. You, know, you can use the term uh, cultural baggage or you can uh, refer to the work of Louis Hartz and the founding of new society, certainly. You know, yeah, pe people come to a country with, you know, with certain preconceptions, uh, you know, or, or certain, you know, a cultural history, and then it interacts with circumstances uh, in the new world. Uh, also, uh, it's important to look at the interplay between the old country and, and the new world, uh, just in terms of uh, immigrants in the new world often being uh, influenced by, by events uh, fr you know, from, from the, either the, you know, their point of uh, origin, the old country, or their ancestral homeland. Uh, I'll use a, a prime example, uh, Ukrainian community development in, in, a early, in the early years in Alberta. Uh, was spurred by a, a 1909 gathering, uh, you know, in Narodnivice that very much had its had its point of departure as a 1909 Prosvetno-Ekonomichny Congress in Lviv. So events in the old country can uh, can also uh, provide a, a model for for events uh, in the new world. So uh, you can't really divorce uh, Ukrainian Canadian studies from you know, from Ukrainian studies, if you're dealing with Ukrainian Canadian studies, you really have to know uh, developments uh, in Ukraine because there is there is an imp interplay uh, between that. Pardon? Okay. So. Uh, some some specific uh, items that I think uh, you know would would rank, uh, and this is not in, in broad themes, but you know specific projects. Certainly, I think uh, we would require a major conference, or and this would either be a major public conference or a conference uh, in, in closed doors, uh, close uh, you know with specific uh, papers dealing with the post Second World War period. Uh, the period about 1945 to 1955. I think we are in dire need of a study of the fourth wave of Ukrainian immigration uh, to Canada. And then there's always the, uh, you know, the question, the question of the 1980s immigration from Poland and the former Yugoslavia, which remains, you know, you know, sort of still remains generally unstudied. And in fact, you know, that that period of immigration is not even not even uh, well it's not even established as a period because it's is it third wave the late third wave is it pre fourth wave or is it a fourth wave and you know what we call the fourth wave a fifth wave uh, it's, it's, it's uh, you know that's uh, an issue that i think uh, in the future will need to be dis resolved i think with the there's a need for a statistical study of ukrainian canadian t uh, canadians today that's basically a, a, a snapshot of the current status of the Ukrainian community in Canada. The statistical compendium on the, on the Ukrainians in Canada, 1891 to 1976, was a landmark work, and it was updated in certain categories by Botan Kordan's Ukrainian Canadians and the Canadian Census. But time has moved on, and I think uh, you know, we, uh, we, do, we would require, we would benefit you know, from a, a major study of just the statistics, where are Canadian, you know, where, you know, providing, you know, where are Ukrainian Canadians at today? Uh, and I think there's a, a need for more uh, interdisciplinary and micro local histories. Uh, I think, uh, uh, for example, uh, John John Lair's 2011 work on on the Stuart Burn community, community and frontier. Uh, is a good start or, or, or a good indicator. Uh, as well, by the same token, I think there's r room for uh, urban histories uh, to look, look closely, particularly at uh, you know, major centers of Ukrainian settlement like Edmonton, Saskatoon, uh, Winnipeg, and Toronto.
Thank you for your attention.